Hi, this is Andy from the ARDK SDK team at Niantic. And this is a quick walkthrough to show how to use the IAR networking interface to create a shared AR experience between multiple phones. Um, so it's going to be sort of a bare bones Unity scene and the components needed to set up this experience and what it looks like. So sort of jumping straight into the scene, uh, the directional light and event system provided by Unity when you create a scene. An example manager, which is an empty game object uh, to which I've added a script that I'll go through. And then two more scripts that we provide as part of the ARDK. Uh, the Android permission requester, which uh, requests camera and other permissions on the Android platform, and the capability checker to ensure that the device can actually run AR. And then I added a canvas with uh, two fields, um, just a start button and an input field. I'll go through these later and what they're used for. Uh, the start button is hooked up to the AR example manager that I created and the create and run shared AR method. Uh, so the first thing that I'll want to do is also add uh, the AR scene camera to the scene. Uh, this uh, prefab is provided as part of ARDK and it sets up rendering the device's camera feed as the backdrop to your scene and overlays virtual objects on top of it. It also tracks uh, the phone as it moves around in the real world so that virtual objects stay at anchor. Uh, so let's hop into, oh, um, I'll be using Virtual Studio a lot, which is a tool that we provide to sort of see uh, and block out uh, AR and networking objects. And I'll be using the mock configuration so everything is happening in editor instead of getting real AR data or connecting to a real service. Uh, going to the code now, uh, shared AR example. Uh, I have everything commented out and in blocks and I'll just go down in a list. Um, some imports, some of them are grayed out because things are commented out for now, but they're all used. Uh, this is a uh, mono behavior, so it's put on my game object. Uh, various references to things that I'll use. Uh, this is the input field and a game object that I'm going to use as a pure pose later. And some references and a dictionary that I'll use later. So this uh, create and run shared AR method. Uh, the first thing we'll want to do is create the AR networking object with the AR networking factory. And uh, by default, the empty constructor will create a mock uh, AR networking in the editor and a live device or a real uh, AR session on mobile. So that's an AR core AR kit session. Uh, once this object is created, you can also grab an iMulti peer networking and an iAR session from it. They are sort of the local uh, single player AR that you would think of like an AR kit or AR core session and then also a networking object so that we can pass data between devices. Um, the next thing that we'll want to create is an AR world tracking configuration. Uh, this is the configuration with which the AR session will be run. And it allows you to set some fields. Um, for example, in this demo, I want the world alignment to be gravity. So Y is always up and autofocus enabled. Uh, this gives you other configurations like uh, image detection, plane detection, uh, depth setting, semantic segmentation. So everything you sort of want to configure your AR session will probably be here. And uh, particularly important for this uh, example is the is shared experience enabled flag, which uh, signals to our native components to actually create the computer vision synchronization pipeline. And if this flag isn't set, then synchronization will never happen. Um, so yeah, after creating the configuration and setting these flags, we run the AR session. And once the AR session uh, is run, we can also listen to this event on session RAN. 
uh, here I'm not doing much, just logging out that the AR session has run. So very quickly going over what we have currently. Um, right, if I hit play, uh, just to start, you see AR session ran. Oh, I should probably add um, mock up. Yes, we have a mock-up scene prefab, which is just a fake room that uh, looks like real AR data. It has a table, walls, a floor, and some spheres. And now if I run, once you run, you can see this is the room. And you can sort of fly around with WASD. Okay. Um, Going back to our example, now we have our AR session configured and running. Uh, now we want to join the networking session. So this is where the session ID field or the input field that I mentioned earlier comes into use. Uh, just for now, let's assume that the user will always input something before hitting run. Uh, no smart checks here. Uh, so we want to grab the string that they inputted and then use uh, UTF-8 encoding to get the bytes out of the string. Our uh, networking sessions are always uh, byte arrays. So as long as two devices join the same session using the same byte array, um, they'll be able to find each other and communicate. Um, and some event, uh, just to know that the networking is properly connected. And again, just a debug log with a peer ID and whether or not that peer is the host. Uh, in terms of AR networking, the host is the first peer that, or first peer and device are sort of synonymous or a mobile phone. Uh, the Unity editor can also be considered a peer, but it'll never run a real AR uh, backed session. So um, yeah, sort of some layers of intricacy there. Uh, but yeah, the first session, uh, the first peer in the session will be the host. And it's the host's responsibility to scan the world uh, using their phone and generate a computer vision map. And then it'll send that map to all other devices in the session. And they will download it, attempt to synchronize against it. And that's how we establish a shared coordinate space so that all the phones can uh, know where each other are relative to a single origin. OK, so sort of playing what we have now. Um, recompiling, clear. All right, always input something, click Start. Yep, there we have it. Uh, the AR session is ran, and the networking session is joined. Uh, this is my peer ID. It's a GUID, and I am the host because I am the first and only peer in the session. Uh, also sort of. Important on destroy, uh, we'll want to actually dispose and clean up of all the sessions and objects that we created. Uh, this isn't super important in the mock um, setup because we have handlers behind the scenes to handle it. But on a mobile phone, you'll want to explicitly dispose or even uh, leave networking. Uh, leave the networking uh, just so that you have control over when objects are created and destroyed and don't leak anything. So now we have a running AR session. We join the networking, and we want to get some more information. So these two events are the uh, AR networking related information. Uh, pure state received uh, lets us know which state in the computer vision pipeline uh, the local device and all other devices in the session are in. And pure pose received uh, lets us know where each uh, device is in this shared coordinate space. And devices will only start broadcasting their pose after they are stable or synchronized. Uh, and stable means that they are in this shared coordinate space. Um, let me quickly go over a state diagram of 
uh, all the various states that you can see. Initially, when the host joins the session, it'll be in state unknown, and it will quickly move to waiting for localization data once uh, the computer vision pipeline is generated. Similarly, uh, peers will be in unknown and waiting for localization, localization data. And at this point, uh, everyone is waiting for the host phone to move around, scan the world, and generate a computer vision map. And once the host does that and uploads it to the server, uh, the host will be in the stable state. And once a peer has discovered the map on the server and downloaded it, uh, that will happen automatically. It will move from waiting for localization data to localizing. After getting this map and then scanning around the world on peer devices, and if it can synchronize against the map that the host sent, it will be moved to the stable state as well. At this point, all other peers will start broadcasting their location to devices in the session. And the game is playable once all devices are in the stable state. Uh, if devices aren't in a stable state, that means they aren't part of the shared coordinate system and so the poses and locations of virtual objects are nonsense to them because they're still in their local coordinate space. So these are some state messages, uh, debug, and I will go over pose uh, later. So now we have a shared AR session and yourself. This is um, my peer. I am at waiting for localization data and I can move myself along, like pretend to be localizing and then stable. I found a map. And I can also add two mock peers. Uh, these are in waiting for localization. And once they are, I can move them to localizing and stable. And there they are. Uh, it's just a mock object to put in the scene. I can like move it back. 2.5. Move this one back. And they will um, be broadcasting their location as if they are real mobile phones, and you can move them around. All right, stop this session. Now to sort of the most gameplay part of this um, tutorial, uh, actually setting up a pure pose indicator and listening to it. So I have this game object pure pose indicator and a dictionary holding um, mappings from peers to their indicator because I just uncommented it. I have to set this up again. So the indicator will be um, just a very simple uh, default unity sphere. I set the scale to 0 0.05 so that we don't have a massive one meter sphere uh, floating around. And this is my pure pose indicator. So uh, once I actually get a pose from peers. Uh, if it's the first time that I'm getting a pose for that peer, I'll want to instantiate a sphere just for that peer. And this will be the uh, avatar responsible for that peer from now on. And after that, uh, so peer poses will be sent at about 60 frames per second. And there is an interface on the AR networking object to throttle or disable that completely if your experience um, doesn't care about peer poses, but the default is 60 frames per second. Uh, so this will be called at that rate for every peer in the session. Uh, I will try to get the indicator that I spawned from the dictionary. Um, because I know the state machine of this, um, I know this will always be true, but some defensive safety programming. Uh, so I take um, the pose of the peer. Uh, this will be in a matrix four by four, which is the transform rotation scale or translation rotation scale uh, matrix. Uh, so uh, when you broadcast the pose, uh, you'll have the peers uh, vector three position in the world and a quaternion rotation indicating where the mobile phone is pointed. And we have a two position utility function that extracts the vector three world position from this pose. Uh, the pose is in world space. 
So I'm setting the indicator's uh, position at the pure poses position and applying an offset of half a meter um, just so that I can see it in the editor and it's not blocked by the capsule. capsule. Uh, when I actually build this to the device, I'm going to delete this 0 0.5 because it's actually a pretty big offset to have half a meter in real life. So with it all coming together, um, we can run. I have myself. I connect everyone. I am stable. They are stable. And you can see the sphere. Uh, this is the sphere that is being spawned and tracking their position. So if I push them back, uh, the sphere moves with them. And if I move it to the right, there it is. If I move it a bit more, uh, it's gone. But yeah, it's just uh, tracking their position. OK, uh, so for now, we've sort of just been using debug messages to prove what's going on. Uh, but we did add some useful uh, quick visualization tools in uh, ARDK examples, common uh, helpers, networking. So I'll add a network status indicator, um, sync state tracking list, and sync status display. So uh, the network status indicator is a white circle, and it gives me some indication of um, my peer ID, uh, whether I'm connected to the networking session and whether I'm the host. Uh, the tracking list will tell me all other peers in the session and their current uh, status in the computer vision pipeline. So not connected, but like uh, waiting for localization data, localized, stable, etc. And the sync status display just uh, gives me some debug information about how long it took me to sync, whether I'm synced, where the host is, and where I am. So after just uh, adding these on and running, see, I am the host. Uh, I have a peer, which is myself. I am in the waiting for localization data state. If I connect and run, here are my other peers. Uh, if I move myself along, I see this update. And I can move other peers along. And they all get updated. So this is an easy way to visualize things when you're actually built to a phone and you don't have debug messages handy. And some more debug information. OK, now I will actually build this to device. and show you what this looks like on a device. Um, first, I removed the half meter offset because it's too much for um, real life. And in the Android build settings, I had to target Android 10 uh, specifically. There is some build settings and Gradle configuring that you'll need to target Android 11 and beyond. And we describe those in the docs. But just for the quick and easy example, um, I targeted Android 10. And in iOS, I had to add a camera usage description uh, because it's uh, Xcode requirement. And if you're using mes uh, meshing, you'll also need the location usage description. Uh, but yeah, those were it. just some short build configuration changes. And this is the video that I took. So joining the test session, um, it's joined. I'm the host. This is my second device. I'm joining the same session. Um, not trying to hide anything, just forgot how to move around. All right, the host device is walking around, quickly generates a map, becomes stable. And the other device gets that map, is trying to localize against it. Um, I think it's a iPhone 8, so a bit older, a bit slower, but it should be stable. There it is. All right. Um, and once both phones are stable, they'll start broadcasting each other's poses. And the iPhone can see my other phone. 
And this is just the avatar that I set up to track its pose. And this is the example I just built running on two devices. Okay, so this is the last part of this walkthrough and it will be moving from uh, the raw C Sharp APIs to using our provided manager objects, which uh, do lifecycle handling, object creation, and so on, so that you don't have to do that uh, through code if you don't want to. So I'll be taking out some parts of my example manager that create and run things, and instead go through uh, this object, AR networking scene manager. I'll drag and drop this into the scene. Uh, it already contains an AR scene camera, so I'll remove the one I added. And uh, this basically contains an AR session manager, networking session manager, and AR networking manager. Uh, if you're just using an AR session or just using a network session, uh, these are the two components to go for. But since AR networking uses all of them, uh, we have this high level prefab and there is a checkbox for manage using Unity lifecycle. Uh, I'm gonna uncheck that because uh, when that is on, uh, when this object is uh, on enable, on awake uh, and so on, uh, it will actually run through and do initialization. Uh, I wanna tie it to buttons, so I'm gonna uncheck this box. I'll take my input field and pass it here. So I'm letting this object control um, input and on my button, instead of going to my example manager and uh, create and run, I am just going to uh, go to the AR networking seed manager. There's an AR networking manager and enable features. So when this button is clicked, uh, it'll run the AR networking managers enable features and that should get everything running. So uh, just quickly going through it once with every, all the new references set up, uh, input field, start, works. Uh, yep, everything works as it does before, uh, except that I will no longer be tracking uh, poses correctly. Like I won't be spawning the sphere and tracking it because that's responsible. Uh, the, the responsibility is this class and this class never gets set up. So I go over uh, some replacements. Instead of a button uh, that creates and runs and gets references, I'm just going to listen to the AR networking, uh, AR networking factories, AR networking initialized. Yeah, so I'm just going to uh, on awake, listen to networking initialized and on destroy, instead of disposing, I'm just going to unsubscribe. Because uh, now it's the manager that will be handling the life cycle. I am just listening to objects that get created. And when this is initialized, I'll know uh, that it has been created, so I get a reference, and I can set up my other references. So those are my references, and similarly, I'm just going to set up my events. And everything should now work. Join, start, everyone connects. I'm stable, they're stable. And I have my spheres. Uh, I still, I took off the offset uh, for building to an actual device. So they're inside the capsules now, but they are there and they are tracking correctly, supposedly. Yep, there it is. It's gone. Oh, that's one. And there's the atmosphere. 
So the advantage of using our managers is that it allows you to uh, quickly drag and drop it in. You don't have to worry about C Sharp APIs or creation. Uh, all of the toggles are on the Unity inspector itself. And we have a bunch of other um, managers like depth and uh, image detection, semantic segmentation, et cetera. So all of those are configurable at a Unity inspector level instead of through code. And yeah, that's my walkthrough.